Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Penelope and today I am doing a Seaside Sanctuary speed build. So for this build, I'm imagining an old beach bungalow that has been renovated and to be, to be a bigger sort of vacation home. And then the family liked the home so much that they moved in. So that's kind of like the, I, the idea I was going with, with for this one. So you can see the front like piece that's sticking out. Um, that's what I imagine the first part of the bungalow to be. And then everything else is just add-on. And so for this build, I wanted to play around with having lots of really nice balconies. And also, um, I'm putting the entire build on stilts, which is why I just deleted the bottom floor. So yeah, I really enjoyed this build. The pillars, I kind of wasn't sure how many to put. I put one on every corner, pretty much. <laughs> and then I put a couple more in the middle. So if you look at the picture um, of it on the gallery, the Simsware gallery, it looks really weird, the first floor. But that's okay. So I um, am trying to get everything adjusted correctly and I'm picking out the windows. I wanted, you know, to have the sort of older windows, but I also wanted some newer ones too because I thought of it being remodeled. And for all of the balconies, except for the front door, I actually put two small doors combined into one to look like uh, a sliding glass door or just like a two paneled glass door because I don't like any of the other ones in The Sims, so I just made my own. Uh, if you look really closely, you can kind of tell something's off because one door is facing outside and the other is facing inside and you can kind of tell the difference with the depths. But I think it looks fine. <laughs> I Here I'm trying to add a stairway because I wanted that upper sort of dormer, I think that's what it's called, to be accessible and turn it into a room. Um, and so I was messing around with that and I ended up expanding it into the back and then once it was in the back it didn't look centered so I added a little bit onto it um, and so I gave more room up there and it also just made the back end of the house look good without making the front end of the house look bad <laughs> I mean if you're looking at it from a bird's eye view you might be like this this doesn't quite match but maybe I don't think very many people will play their game from a bird's eye view the entire time I'd be interested if anybody does, but it'd be a really interesting way to play. So right here I'm laying out where I want the bedrooms. This is a three bedroom home. Uh, the um, upper floor I consider to be one bedroom slash study. Um, and then the second floor is two bedrooms. I put an adult's master bedroom and then a kid's bedroom. So here I'm testing out all the windows. I like to kind of do that all at once to make everything match, um, especially because I like to use a lot of different windows. Going back inside, in the master bedroom I also added this little walk-in closet area with the actual like closets that the um, Sims, one of the Sims expansion packs gave us, and so I thought that was really cool. And then this area of the house that I'm working on was giving me so much trouble because it was lit up like it had a hole in the ceiling and I couldn't figure out why and so I ended up like having to like rebuild around it and then add the roof and like do different things and then finally it worked and I also added another closet up there. I thought that made the house look really realistic. I think the more storage you can put in a house, the more functional it is and the more realistic it looks in The Sims because I don't really know anybody who doesn't have like a closet like any closet space at all but I don't know my apartment has two closets and it's not enough <laughs> so maybe I'm just um, overcompensating because I don't have enough closets in my life <laughs> so here I'm deciding on the outside color this gave me a little bit of difficulty because I wish the sims had more colors they have good textures for the like outside walls but I think houses come in more than like 
16, 17, 20 colors, however many they have. Like, they also don't have any good, like, bright colors, like purple, because I know a lot of houses that have some purple in them, and that'd be really fun to add to The Sims. Um, so here I'm deciding on the balconies, and at first I played around with having a glass balcony so that you could kind of see the front better, but then I just ended up with, I'm pretty sure, the sort of like farm style balconies. Oh, and then I recolored every single post because <laughs> I thought the white stood out too much and I wanted it to match with the rest of the build because that way it kind of looks like the pillars are made from the same wood that the house is made from. Uh, <laughs> hopefully that's what it looks like. I also added texture here to make it look like people use that entrance a lot coming off of the beach and so like they're tracking the sand from the beach into the house because I think that's a very beachy thing to do. I've been to like Hawaii uh, for like little vacations, uh, just twice. <laughs> and I would always track in sand to like the hotels. And so I thought that added to some of the realism. I also um, added a whole bunch of flower boxes because I thought they were really cute. I don't know how you would water, water those. I guess maybe if you open the window, but a lot of these windows don't look like they open. Um, so here I tried to go with a really neutral palette for the inside, and then I also wanted to add the wood siding because I think that gives it a really beachy look. Um, but I did end up changing all of the walls that are like just plain white to the walls that have the crown molding because it looked too plain. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, I kept the flooring that's on the main floor, and that flooring is consistent throughout the house except for in the bathrooms. And here, <laughs> here I'm trying to figure out the layout of this house. It was really hard. Um, I cut out a lot of time from this build. Um, this build was 4 hours and 52 minutes, so it was pretty much 6 hours to do. And a lot of that had to do with me trying to figure out what, how to rearrange the open concept living space because it, it seemed like there was too much room in some places and not enough room in other places. And there's actually a section, <laughs> I don't know if I kept it in here or not, but this is sped up like nine times I think. I'm not quite sure how much is sped up, I don't remember the exact number, but I know but there's a section that would have been like a whole minute of me trying to decide on a couch. And so then that translated into 20 minutes. I don't think that's the right multiplication, but in, in real time, it took me 20 minutes to figure out the couch situation. Like, you know, I just kept cycling through all of them, trying out all the different colors. Oh my gosh, what a way, what a way to spend your day and your time. Yeah, but that's okay. So for this um, bathroom that I'm working on now on the upper floor, um, I wanted it to have two sinks and so for that to look good, especially with the window, and I like having a mirror over each sink, so I thought that I was kind of required. Um, so for that to work, I had to put them facing opposite directions. So hopping over to the kitchen, yes, I wanted to put a little window there because I wanted that wall there for to add the cabinets to but I also wanted there to be sight lines and it just kind of looked weird and so I did eventually take both the window and the walls out which cut down on the cabinet space but I guess maybe I can think of it as the family only thought this would be a summer home so maybe they don't have the best sort of like cabinet space and so I tried doing shelves too because I didn't the white cabinets I ended up putting in I think maybe look a little bit boring but that looked really weird and so I did end up going with the white cabinets although I do rearrange the kitchen a little bit um, yeah I kind of had a little trouble with this kitchen looking too plain because I one I like my woods to kind of match 
and two, I like pretty much everything to match and so I have to be careful I don't go too boring and so it was, I thought it looked maybe a little bit too boring. And here I'm trying to figure out the living room area. This isn't the part where I did the couch for 20 minutes. I'm pretty sure I cut that out. Um, I don't even think this is the couch I ended up with. No, I don't think it is because I changed the wall color I'm thinking, but I could be wrong. <laughs> this um, speed build took me a while to put together because my video editing software kind of pooped out on me and I had to find pretty much a different one, which was a whole roller coaster. But here I'm doing the downstairs bathroom and it's a full bathroom because upstairs um, the kids bathroom or the kids bedroom doesn't have any bathroom and then the up like the up upstairs um, bedroom also doesn't have a bathroom so I figured you need to have two full bathrooms you can't just have a half bathroom and then an ensuite because that would be kind of weird so I also wanted to add curtains in here to make it more realistic uh, and I fell in love with those coral and sort of bright green curtains that you can see in the frame right now but I then became frustrated because there isn't any furniture that is coral and so it would have been great if I could maybe have a coral couch or maybe a coral seat but no <laughs> so that's one of the things <laughs> that took me a little bit of time to figure out what I wanted the couch to be. I ended up with the green down there. And so now upstairs, this is one of my favorite rooms in the house. It's the third floor bedroom. And I wanted to keep this bedroom looking like this wasn't one of the rooms that the family had renovated yet. So I wanted some older furniture in it. I wanted it to look like they just hadn't touched it yet because maybe it's a guest room, maybe um, they just figure, eh, it's fine how it is for now. I also found a cute little fan that I put on top of the dresser because I figured wherever this is, it's probably really warm. And with that desk that was just in the frame, I found out you could put stuff on top of it. So I put up a lantern and that was a lot of fun. Here, I am trying to find something that matched. I ended up just going with that green chair, I think. Um, a lot of green stuff in there because I didn't have coral. I might still be a little salty over that. Uh, the outside area, I wanted it to have a really nice sitting area and I added uh, like a chair and a table so you could eat like breakfast out there. I thought that was really cute. And now I'm trying to add stuff to the front. I love that giant potted plant. I keep that. I really like it. And then that pot of plant inspired me to add plants everywhere else in the house. And so I was working on that. And I wanted there to be a sitting area out on the front deck. But I didn't want it to look too cluttered because that is the first thing you see with the house. So I did kind of just end up with those chairs and that potted plant. Um, and then I put a little, little tiny plant on top of that little table. I thought it looked really cute. And... Then for this balcony, I played around with adding, you know, plants, knickknacks, decor, but I ended up just leaving it blank because it did look too color cluttered. I think if you're playing this game, if you use this in your game, you could add stuff there and it wouldn't look weird, but for the photo, it looked weird, so I took it out. Um, yeah, so here I was trying to come up with different decoration options, so whenever I found something I liked in the decor section, I either put it where I knew I wanted it or I put it on the front deck or the, the yard so I could put it somewhere later. And then, like, I like to do my windows all at once. I like to do my lights all at once. Um, I think it helps me figure out making the room not too dark or not too bright. And it helps me keep everything cohesive, but at the same time, it probably makes everything look a little bit too similar. <laughs> Uh, here I'm trying to figure out the right light for that little walk-in closet area because it's such a small room that it got really like too bright or it got too dark and it was it was a hassle. Oh and here's another hurdle. <laughs> this I love this build but this build was rocky for me. I'm trying to add the dining table and I wanted there to be like a relatively normal to large dining table but it was in the entryway and that didn't look good and so I could put 
like a four, like a square one over somewhere else, but then that looked too crowded. So I ended up putting it against the wall, the longer one. And I keep those chairs in the style of the table, just rectangular. And I love those chairs because I think they look like they belong in Ariel's castle, in The Little Mermaid. Uh, just because they have like the scallop trim on top. So I really like that. And I like how they look with that curtain, the coral one. So there's this little area I put the coat hanger in because it was left over from where I put the stairs. So I think that makes it look okay. And this area, I wanted to put something in it and it looked kind of weird like everything else in the build. <laughs> but yeah, I ended up going back to it and putting, I think, something there. I forget what exactly. And in this little section, this is one of my favorite things to do. I put a chair and then I put some books on it because I feel like almost everybody has that one chair that they pull out for like Thanksgiving dinner or something, but the rest of the year it just lives in one little area of the like house and then it gets stuff put on it. So I put that there. And this is the final layout of the kitchen. I finally decided on something. And oh, I found coral stools. <laughs> I was so excited. I got to bring the coral back into the build. Um, I also cut off that corner of the bedroom. The bedroom, oh my gosh, I hope you aren't sleeping in there. The bathroom. So that it would give me more space to put something there. And what I did end up putting right there is a game table. Because who, well, not everybody does, but I know my family plays like board games and stuff when we're on vacation, whether it's at home or other places. We like to do that. It's a really good family bonding thing. And so the like don't knock over the llama game is there. And so, yeah. And there I wanted to put that little chest because I thought it looked so cute. And then I put that like mint green little like dishes dresser. And I just loved how that turned out, that little area. And then for this master bedroom, I put those sort of tapestries. And those are the ones I had originally just like thrown out on the lawn. And so then I brought them back into the house because I obviously wasn't going to keep them on the lawn. So in a second, I hop over to the younger kids room. And I went with blues for this bedroom, but it is pretty feminine, traditionally so. But I mean, I personally think that it doesn't matter what color something is, like you can enjoy it if you're a boy or a girl. And so this one's blue and a little bit floral, but I think a boy could like it just fine. Um, I wanted, it's a small bedroom, so I wanted to put like stuff in there. Um, and I put these, I love these little shelves that I put in and I put lots of little toys on them, sort of like the knickknacks. And then I love putting posters all over a wall. I did that when I was younger. I actually only did it to one like section of my wall. Um, I think that was all I was allowed to do. I think my parents didn't want me to ruin the walls. And now I'm moving back to the master bedroom and I ended up putting a dresser there. It took me a little time to decide what I wanted. And then I thought I could put clocks and I think I did put a clock there. And so I was excited. I, I feel like I always forget to put a clock. And then there I do my chair trick again because that's so much fun. <laughs> and I put more books. Uh, and then I put like a little movie poster and I was just really adding all of like little finishing touches with the decor. This is one of the parts I really like. I like I like clutter. And I think that spaces look very cold and sort of spartan without the clutter. So I like putting that in. And I like, I needed to put in the rugs. And that area I added a mirror to because there's a little like closet. And so I figured that's a good place to put a mirror because <laughs> where there's a closet. And then let's see, I love that little like potted plant and book section so I thought that was a good thing to put on the corner and then I almost forgot the trash can but I didn't. I also put in a popcorn machine because I'm currently obsessed with popcorn and so 
what would a good family vacation slash just life in general be without popcorn? Aha! Here's the chess table. This is what I put in. I thought this is what I put in. Um, and I thought this carpet here really helps define that space as the living room. So I purposely left the like lawn as being pretty bare. I ended up putting a little campfire because I thought that was really cute and so I put some chairs and a log and a stone around that. And that was the last thing that I did on this build. I hope that you liked this build. If you did, give me a like or subscribe. I will be putting up on the gallery my user, my origin ID is Pineapple. YT. Here are the screenshots. I also have a Wishing Well Legacy Challenge Let's Play, which is a lot of fun, and there will be a link to that in the description below. And there will also be a link at the end of the video on the screen for that and another one of my speed builds. I hope you guys really enjoyed this and are having a good day. I will see you guys later. Bye!